Start hey. whenever you're ready. Yeah, all right. Hey, Internet. I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine and Series Business, episode 304. Chaz has the house to himself this week. We cleared out a bunch of busted magic packs, dirty t-shirts, and 12-ounce empties of Miller High Life to bring you this show. <laughs> <laughs> See, six, get it right. 16-ounce Miller High Life six, empties. Oh, 16. Or High okay. Life. High Life. The, the sparkling wine of beers. Right? All right. <laughs> you can drink it any time. Exactly. Uh, we've got Abe in a, in a place of prominence during this show. Thanks yep. for sticking around up there. We're here to talk Riesling today. We talked Riesling on the last show. We're going to talk Riesling on the next show. We've got a lot of Riesling coming yeah. up. It's, it's a kind of a Riesling... We're, we're leading into a bunch of Riesling going on in the valley, right? There's this uh, Riesling invasion going on that uh, the Tuttles put on. Does yeah. the Tuttles put on every year? Well, they, 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 kicked, they kicked it off and they got, a, they got a panel of people. Pretty much the whole valley's come together to put on this amazing... Amazing Riesling show on was it June, July twenty third, Ju- July twenty third at the uh, at the Jacobs and Salt Co. I've got a link down below. Tickets are for sale now. Get one. Uh, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there having a good time. Uh, a ton of other producers are there. I was my mind was blown when I looked at the list of producers, and it's all Riesling. Is that your favorite grape yet or no? Yeah, probably. Nice. Honestly, so, both of us. so I mean, it's 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 what I spend all my money on these days. Uh, I, I buy more Riesling than anything. At this point, now granted, it's Germany, but mo- more than anything. But um, yeah, but the the quality in Oregon, even in the time we've been doing this show, uh, I think has been really exciting to watch it grow. It has. It's dramatically increased. I mean, there's a lot of good riesling out there, and a lot of people that are doing uh, kind of weird rieslings. Yeah, they're like stepping out of you know, like trying to emulate certain places in the world that we love. Um, it's it's pretty awesome. Right? And I think for many many years, for many people, it was just like. Another white, kind of in the realm of Pinot Gris, where you make it quick, you make it easy, you make it fast, you get it out the door for a little bit of cash flow, um, and it's become a grape of more intent and more interesting. And we're, we're going I backwards. I poured these backwards. That's all right. We had a little disagreement okay. before we started which order we're going to go, and now, despite our agreements, we're going to go with Chaz's order. <laughs> we, we, can do, we, can, we can just toss them real quick no, and, no. and cut it. Okay. All right. I can toss it. Let's we'll just do it. Let's, let's just, just let's do it. Let's just toss it. Okay. okay. All right. We're gonna go back in the bottle. All right. We're back. Uh, the agreement was we were we were talking about which order to do the wines in, and we decided initially we did a little tiny pre-taste that we should start with the Petra 2015 Riesling K. Uh, this is a Lemon Valley Riesling. Yep. So in the in the cabinet style, but because American labeling restrictions are incredibly strict, you can't put cabinet. On your on your rieslings, uh, this received some really good press from some other folks lately. I don't remember exactly who, uh, but but I, I remember him sharing that. Uh, Bill's doing really cool stuff out of Methven Vineyards. Um, you know, kind, kind of newer to the valley, but but right out of the gate is is taking real ownership of the vines. There's a lot of his own farming, uh, which which is unusual, I think, for people, especially people that don't that don't own the vineyards to start with. Right. Um, and and keeps a great blog talking about all the work he's putting into making sure the grapes get just the right amount of nutrients and sun to try and improve how they're coming into the into the winery. Um, very intentional, very well educated. Yeah. Uh, fascinating to talk to about this stuff. Hey, cool guy. Just totally. uh, we, we were able to go out to the meth, to Methven and uh, hang out with Bill for an evening. Uh, got to learn Thanks. a lot about yeah. Thank yeah. you, Bill. Got to learn a lot about the wines. See see the whole setup. Um, Making some cool stuff, so and making some weird wines too. What what you'll yep. see on another episode, he does like some orange riesling. Uh, really kind of ch- check trying to find the whole spectrum of what riesling can do in Willamette Valley, and I love that. Yeah, but one to watch, and if you're a riesling lover, like like do yourself a favor, pick up a few of his bottles, keep an eye on what he's doing because it's going to be one of the Willamette Valley's you know very interesting stories moving forward. Totally. Huh. <sighs> <laughs> Well, first get on the off, phone, I just get on spilled, the shirt. That's still straight in my crotch. That's awesome. I might as well just wipe it up with my shirt, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Classy show. Classy show for classy individuals. It's weird. I've got sort of like, there's like a, I don't know, the aroma on the nose is sort of like, uh, it's like light pears and very stony to me. Like, it's really, yeah. Full minerality, maybe a little bit of dustiness. Uh, I would I would agree with the pears. It's almost it's almost a touch like uh, it's not oxidized, it's almost like caramelized or something. Like I keep going back to this like it's like a, like a butter and apple. I don't really? know. Okay, I can't um, remember that, but 
I mean, there's no mallow. It's not like a yeah, sort not of, like Chardonnay yeah, butter. Not like, right? Yeah, it's not like a Chardonnay butter sort of thing. But like, there's sort of a almost like a fatty, creamy element to the nose. But I don't know. Hmm. I wouldn't maybe say that, but I, I wouldn't disagree with it okay. outright either. So yeah, just, my nose maybe just in a weird place. Today. But in contrast to to uh, some of the wines we're, we're going to taste today, it's definitely not not like not a lot of fruit on the nose jumping out at you. Right, right? the fruit's really delicate here. Exactly. Yeah, it's not a very like fruity nose. So. It's crisp and clear on the palate, and just these young fruit flavors mm. kind of bloom on the mid palate. Um, yeah, nice and expressive on the palate. Yeah, uh, again, not super ripe, not super mm-hmm. heavy, but I think with that style, that's not the intent. Mm-hmm. The acidity is fairly gentle. I Agreed. think like it's there. Yeah, I like the acidity on this. Um, it's there, but it's kind of mature and uh, just shy of round. I wouldn't use that descriptor, but it's but it's gentle acidity, especially for as light. As the fruit flavors are, I'm kind of even expecting a little more punch, but this is more elegant than that. Yeah, the, the fruit flavors are really sort of laid back and like like light in their approach. Um, the white pear sort of thing, like the sort of Asian pear, has a bit of that. Stop chewing on the microphone. No. <laughs> Go for there. You just look pretty for the camera or something. Yeah. So um, anyway, like, like sort of a white pear, um, a bit of apple flavor, but like there's like this sort of... Uh, like lemon uh, zest, lemon peel sort of bite in the mid palate, um, but it sort of like br- brings up a little acidity. Um, just really, a really bit. juicy, uh, sort of a juicy mouth feel. Um, really, really easy drinking. The, the sugar, there's definitely some residual su- uh, sweetness here, but it's not like strong or no. overt or like unbalanced. Um, it's very well balanced with the fruit. I think very much in line with with kind of the intended style of the cabinet. Um, like I could see. I could see drinking a couple of these back to back. Yeah. Um, and, and kind of the cliche thing, but but like definitely on a hot day, but, but it's just, with, you know, these are all a little cool. You can see a little sweat on the bottles there. Yeah. Uh, but it's like light and refreshing. Some good flavors, but nothing that's going to tire you out. You can, you can, yeah. Just could kill it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, pretty, uh, the alcohol content's 11.5 for, for a cabinet style. So it's a little, a little. High, and I think that's well, what you see in Oregon, Germany, right? Yes, yeah, right. what you're going to see in Oregon, right? Yeah, Especially like this. Is, this would probably be a tr- you know 11.5 alcohol in Germany is often tracking, but I feel like yeah, a little bit of RS here really helps everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but uh, overall, just a, a really juicy, delicious wine. So well balanced. Yeah, yeah. well done. Cool stuff. Break down. Drink it. It's good. All right. So the second one we're going to do is the. Timothy Malone Wines, 2015 Medici Vineyard. Can I pronounce it? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Riesling from the Shalem Mountains. So that's yeah. that's that's re- oh yeah, oh, that's a solid that's rinse. A that's solid okay. rinse. Yeah, I'll, I'll going to a show tonight. Uh, my my uh, Joy Joy's Joy used to work with the band Not a Surf, and they're in Portland right now. And oh, and you going to that show tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that should be fun. Yeah, um, and then so she's hanging out with them. So getting a little bit into it isn't the worst thing. Though. Not at all. Yeah, surprised Joy isn't uh, here. Thought you'd have her no, she's on. having dinner with them right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, good yeah. for her. Yeah, it's great. She worked with them for years, so it's nice for her to be able to reconnect with those folks. Right. Um, All right, so you've, you've uh, heard a little buzz around about Yeah, so cool wine, stories right? here. So, right, Medici Vineyard Riesling, kind of some of the old vines in Willamette Valley. Yeah. Um, not a big marketing push around them, so you don't hear about it a lot, but planted in the 70s. Um, and the really wonder, pretty vineyard, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, and the winery right now is home to uh, a bunch of younger winemakers uh, that all rent out space there. So, so Joe Swick, who's been on the show yep. uh, before, and uh, works there, and uh, Tim Malone works there. Uh, we loved his 2012 Pinot Noir. Um, he's new. He, he, he worked with a couple other wineries before going out on his own. But, yeah, I love that. And I had another bottle of that 2012 Pinot Noir again fairly recently. Oh. Uh, smoke, smoke, smoke and wine. That's great. All right. Um, and, and he made Riesling. From 2015, um, heard a lot of good talk about it from some people, and then he was kind enough to send us this bottle as a sample. Um, boy, small producers intentionally making Riesling. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, we'll, totally. We'll, we'll taste this. So. Absolutely. Shout That's out to Michael for, yeah. the, for the nice talk about this, too. So Yeah. yeah. Wow. In, in the past nose few is, minutes, the nose has even opened up a yeah, little bit more than when yeah, we started. Yeah, say. a... Uh... We did our little pre-taste on this, and you know, trying to trying to figure out the lineup, and uh, this has changed dramatically from that just that moment. Um, really nice, just ripe apple apple scents coming out of the nose. Um, good contrast to the previous one, where this one is more fruit dominant. 
Um, it, but very, in a good way. Very much so, yeah. There's a lot more fruit on the palate compared to the last wine. Um, and sort of ripe, like uh, ripe hap apple, honey crisp apple. Um, maybe even like a hint of stone fruit. Yeah. Um, a little touch of rhubarb in there. Got a little bit, a little bit of an edge. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, stone fruity sort of like, it's not peachy, but it's like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Tangerine or something. Just a little bit of minerality, actually. It's, it's, it's a good contrast with this. I think, uh, right, this is min mineral dominant with just a taste of fruit. And this is a uh, fruit dominant nose with just a hint of minerality. So, cool contrast there. Nice. That's nice wine. That's interesting. Yeah. So, so a tip for that too, um, let it sit open for fifteen minutes after <laughs> yeah. you open it. Exactly. You know, that, this is this is easily twice as good as the first the first uh, absolutely the first pour we did out of it. Uh, wow. We literally wow. like just peeled the top off of it, took a quick sip, and uh, I don't know what it just didn't wasn't as expressive. It was just kind of closed, which yeah. which is not unheard of for popping pours, especially white wines. They get yeah. Can be a little tight, and that was definitely the case here. Yeah. So, so no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's got it got more it got more of a sense of roundness on the sure. palate. Um, I'm gonna guess um, it's got a little more sugar to it than this. Just sure, kind of the like way, it. Just kind of the way it sits. Yeah. Um, but those really nice apple flavors we we're talking about uh, come out on the mid palate. Uh, and linger there for a good length of time. Time. And those are the most dominant flavors. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. A little floral component there too. Yeah, um, I, like I was saying, something about stone fruitiness on the on the nose. This is uh, it doesn't really show much of that on the palate. Like it's definitely just the apple flavors. Um, the sugar is definitely feels like more. And I think it round adds a little more roundness to the mouth feel. Adds yep. a little more weight, yep. which is kind of nice. It's got enough acidity, um, but just so. Um, but man, like just huh. the way, just the just the run out and expression of fruit flavor here is really really nice. Again, juicy, sort of delicious. Um, yeah, super easy to get along with. Although I say like, I don't know, whereas like, I think the Petra, I could kill like a bottle of this and then like be ready for another bottle. I would maybe struggle with this one because the sugar levels are, are increasing. I'm right? totally with you on that. Yeah. Uh, I really like on the back end as it sits there for a while, this really nice grapefruit flavor kind of comes in and cleans that sugar out. Um, uh, but, but that sweetness with the apple flavors in the mid palate is kind of a bigger and a fuller experience. Leaning yeah. more towards like uh, kind of like modern German Spätlese. Yeah, um, absolutely. Really, absolutely. where where right in contrast, rarely are you gonna pound a bottle and move right into another <laughs> yeah. one right away. Yeah, um, absolutely. But it's good for sipping. And as I'm talking, man, the acidity just slowly settles in more and more. So uh, so kudos to you there for uh, for having that kind of like length and evolution on uh, yeah. on, on a newer project. I think I think that's showing really well. Um, and uh, yeah, and just recommendation like yeah, like let it open up a little bit, and keep in mind that it's a sweeter wine, so don't open this right before you drink a Chablis or something like that, because yeah. because everybody's going to be sad. Then this is a It'd be a tough play against a, a dry wine, but like yeah. something that pairs well with with a sweeter wine, uh, you'll you'll really I like it later this. in the meal, or I think like with with hot some food. salads, hot yeah, hot actually yes, spicy hot food. wings or something, do this. Yeah. Freaking, we're this due be, this, to this would be the jam. We're due to do another like super fiery. We, we should do it here. We got to get takeout and burn our faces off with Riesling on camera. Let's do it. Yeah, we'll get the we'll get like a twelve or something from lemongrass and uh, we'll watch us suffer. Man, I'll put a all link right. to that little clip last time we did that right. where I lose all the color in my face. <laughs> um, okay, I can uh, I can email you the photograph and you can pop it up right now. That'd be perfect. Of you, of you at Lemongrass. I yeah. show that to people on a regular basis. Really? Yeah. It's just it's just a great photograph. It's Classic. Dan, it's Dan, like, just... No, I'm pale white. Like, he's suffering. Yeah. There's no... There's no way around it. You're like, that man is hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all his own doing. Actually, it's all our doing. <laughs> it's, it's a combination. Yeah, I mean... Nice floral stuff. I, I'm, exci I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to try more. I'm excited to try more. That's all right. Are you drunk already? No, which is weird. Well, I guess I was out in the hot tub drinking before this. Really? So yeah. Wow. That's good. What are you drinking in the hot tub? <laughs> it was that rosé we were drinking. Earlier. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it was a good day. So. Big comment. You just did a big run lately. Well, I ran, I ran a marathon. Yeah. How'd yeah. That go? Very good. Um, nice. I, I 
got under four hours, which has my, been my goal since I started running marathons. I was never a runner in high school, college, um, never been, you know, had training or anything. So it's really kind of hard when you uh, get into the world of running. Like some people are just naturally gifted at it. You know, like I, I know people that ran their first marathon in like 245. Or 250, you know, like they're just like seriously, yeah. I can't even wrap my head around that. Has a friend that ran his first marathon in like under three hours. Unbelievable. He's just like, oh, like some people are just gifted, sure, you know, uh, athletically. I was not one of those people. I can, I can, I could ollie over a garbage can, but asked me to run, you know, 100 yards. I was stressing, Um, and so it's been a long build up for me to 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 a marathon, and I did it. Finally got under under four hours. It's extremely painful running a marathon. Uh, when you go past mile 20, your feet hurt just something, like something else. Uh, I'll show you my foot after this. My no, we'll, still, cut that, we'll my, cut that in as a, after the credits. My foot's still messed up from uh, Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, actually. Um, Have you ran since? Oh, yeah. I ran 10 miles today. So, um, Unbelievable. Yeah, I just got to gotta keep up my training. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to run next, but I think I'm going to give marathons up for a little while. I'm going to mm-hmm. run, run halves. Halves are a fun distance. Like, I could easily run 13.1 miles. And still be a normal person. Jeez, that's amazing. Twenty six miles, you're done. You're you're like without you. Yeah, you're you're hurt. So yeah. I ran a mile a couple of weeks ago. Hey, good. That was good. Yeah. So you get back in and run. Get, well, uh, trying to trying to do that. So I've got big hikes lined up. I've got two week long hiking trips coming this summer. So this is a change gears. A, any uh, cardio or any practice I can do to get up to it and make those trips more enjoyable, I'll be able to see more. Hate my life less while I'm <laughs> while I'm getting from point A to point B. Yeah, I'll try and share some photos for that Teton Teton National Park and Glacier National Park, of course, the best park in the lower 48 states. I need um, to go some, go sometime. Yeah, yeah, that's enough personal rambling. Yep. Um, but uh, but it's good. keep the stories going. Talking about wine number three. This is another sample that was given to us uh, by by uh, by our friend Kim Kramer. This is the uh, 2013 Riesling from Kramer Vineyards. Uh, got a little bit of age on it, uh, but uh, but 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 she sent it to us, so I'm like, oh, yeah, let's check it out. It's 2015. Shit, my bad. So no, I kind of thought it did too, but it does. You're right, it's 13. Yep. So. Super small production. Again, only 100 cases produced uh, from Yamhill Valley. It's always pretty small production. Yeah, they, I think they so. don't have very much of it. So cool. If you haven't been out to Kramer Vineyards to visit, I, Trudy I, and Farmer Keith, right? I can't. So. Yeah, I can't. I can't encourage it enough. And if if you're a fan of this show, it's awesome. Yeah, you should go out there. Send Kim an email on social media. Make an appointment. I'm sure you'll have a fantastic time. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I I yeah. agree. I, I recently took some friends out there. Yeah, she was kind of, like she was there. Right. Thankfully, Kim was there when we went. I wasn't planning on it. Like just showed up to taste in the tasting room, and uh, she was kind enough to taste us, like, take us back and do a couple of barrel samples. The guys I were with were were just in, like, getting used to wine. <laughs> We left. Uh, Keeping up with the Kramers? Can't uh, keep up with the Kramers? They could not keep up with the Kramers. I... So on to the wine. So that may, that totally explains it. Like When we pre-tasted this, I was like, uh, there's sort of like a uh, a bit of an oxidized aroma to me. And I didn't and, get it before. I'm getting a touch of it now. Yeah, and, and it would make a little sense now with the age. Yeah. Right? Like, this isn't a 2015. You wouldn't expect that sort of aroma initially. Uh, I can kind of smell it now. And this is from the Yamhill Vineyard, which is a vineyard that uh, Brooks also uses uh, a, a, a pretty fair amount of. And so I think that's where some familiarity in my mind comes. Huh. Uh, but there are characteristics here that I definitely associate with Pacific Ooh. Northwest Riesling and Oregon Riesling. Uh, there, there's a really distinct kind of like yellow apple aroma yeah. on it. And, it, and you know, I already know it, it, it carries through on the palate. And I think that's, that's something I don't get from, from Rieslings from other parts of the world. It's like a yellow apple, apple aroma. Like I, I had an apple tree growing up my entire childhood, and if you've ever had an apple tree growing up, picking up apples was something you had to do sure. as a kid. Like get out in the backyard, pick up the apples, right? Cause right, and it's not like it's it's a half mile away. It's like in your yard, in our right? backyard, yeah. like this giant apple tree that drops, you know, twenty five apples a day or something like that, sure. and they're all busted open. So you get these like aromas. You know, and of, if you got a ten year old kid, are you picking up the apples or is he picking up the apples? Exactly. We all know. Right. We there's all yellow know. jackets in them. You get stung all the time. Anyway, there's there's this sort of like this the aroma that's coming out of this wine takes me back to that. <laughs> nice. Right. It's like busted open, fresh red apple or uh, wh- white apples, green apples, uh, yellow apples. The tree apple we had was like a, a combination. It was it'd been grafted multiple times, 
Oh so, yeah, she's getting all kinds of apples. Up yeah, so it was tree. yellow and green apples, and uh, this—that's what this aroma is. It's like—it's like slightly uh, where they've they turned a little brown. Um, yeah, or just a hint of caramel or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it smells. It smells. I mean, it smells appetizing. It smells good. Chew yeah, it. and don't let that take you because sometimes you get wines that smell like uh, straight up oxidized apples, like they've gone a little too far. Like you didn't pick them up yesterday when you were supposed to. You're picking them up on Saturday. Sure. After they've been accumulating all week, that's not what's going on here at that's all. That's pretty on though. Yeah. Just yeah. that big burst of right, the, just that, that ripe apple flavor, um, brighter floral characteristics, a little bit of honey. This is also edging towards sweetness. I think just a little sweeter than the previous one. Yep. Not a ton. Or, or, or around the same. Mm -hmm. The thing is about this, as opposed to the, uh, excuse me, Timothy Malone. Timothy Malone. Um, the acidity on this, I think, is a little higher. It totally is. Right? Like, it's up over the top of all the sweetness, and the fruit, especially in the finish, really, like, helps kind of keep it fresher and sort of lighter feeling. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. There's a lot of sugar on this wine, too. Um, not a lot. I mean, but it's... I wouldn't say, like, whereas... Where it's, like, it's a slightly sweet reason. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Where I wouldn't I wouldn't feel... Like, I felt like the Medici, or the, the Timothy Malone, was sort of, like, you could classify this as, like, an Oregon straight level yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where I would. I don't know if I'd classify the Kramer in the same way, right? Hmm. Like I would. But okay. Yeah. Um, maybe back towards more towards cabinet. It just maybe it's just because of the. It feels to me like it's got less sweetness simply based on the acidity. And, and, and to me, the, the in contrast, the sweetness hits earlier with the Kramer, uh, which is interesting. I think it definitely helps it, um, but That's it provides cool. like a little, little bit of minerality, a little bit of a, a little bit of a rigid core around that sweet fruit. Um, and, and I think that does serve it very well. Likewise, I feel I feel like you know drinking bottles of it back to back would would, would probably wouldn't probably wouldn't be my choice. But yeah. uh, but as as a little bit of sweet wine, both of us have no problem with uh, a good amount of sweetness in our rieslings, and I Not think this all. delivers well. The this the, the apple flavors here have a distinct aroma and flavor to them that reminds me of the apple tree in my backyard. That's really like, cool. Which that's really kind of crazy, actually. You want to take back to your mom, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly, uh, it would be interesting because they still have the apple tree. I, was, I still, my parents yeah. still live in the same house that I was raised in, um, and it would be awesome to. And I, I, I eat those apples every time I go home, right? Like they're they're. Is there. it nostalgic when you eat the apples? Oh, I too? love it. Oh, yeah, yeah I go out in the backyard and I pick them. You know, like yeah. it's 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 fantastic. And so this. This has sort of the, the apples. I, I'll I'll figure out the name. Um, I'll ask my mom and she'll know. But um, it's a it's a a green apple that is is uh, juicier and brighter brighter apple fruited than a Granny Smith. Like Granny Smiths are often like sort of like a sour finish. Sure. This doesn't have any of that, right? I mean, it's got like maybe a little touch. That of sounds it. really good. Um, but it's like a, a tart appley. I don't know. It's it's just that it's that distinct style of apple so it's it's uh it's delicious so sorry nice nice uh all, all three wines showing really well tonight um was a little little nervous we, we yeah like i said we tasted all of these before the show because uh a mm. couple couple of them are brand new to us uh nice nice long finish on this too this is a this is yeah. a fantastic wine yeah yeah this is showing really well right now i i would happily drink a bottle of any of these um in a number of different situations uh actually i would struggle to drink this one a full bottle of that yeah, okay. I, I would not, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, I'm good enough. Yeah, I'll yeah. call me. Well, right. It's sort of like a snowball, right? So. Right. right. <laughs> anyway. And where your sweetness level lies. But, uh, so, three uh, very nice, very nice Rieslings uh, for this show. We're going to be back with three to four Rieslings for, for the, the next, next show. show. We're going to do weird Rieslings next time. Yeah. So, totally. we're, we're uh, I've, been, I've been scouting around the valley trying to find, like, kind of strange stuff, so... That's what I think our next show will be. What the hell, too? Uh, we'll, we'll do this either either off our dime or maybe they'll back us up, but, <laughs> but we'll be spontaneous. We're going to give away two tickets on this show uh, for the Riesling Invasion. Uh, you, yeah, you, even if it's on our dime, why not? Sure. Right? It, should, it should be a good time. If, if you're around in Oregon, you're going to be with July 23rd, you said? July 23rd. Um, yeah. Why not? Yeah, put comments in the show. Your entry is valid until I publish the next show which will probably be roughly a week from the time you see this. 
Uh, every comment. Put, put, push it through to the next show. Two, two hours? Yeah, through okay, two Okay, fine, two weeks. Because so we can get like maximum amount of people. Yeah, like, we can, but then we'll, the next show we'll tell people to go back to this one that's good. Sure. So either Facebook comments or comments on wineseriousbusiness.com or YouTube. Or YouTube. All three will be valid. Uh, we'll yep. do some, probably some nerd, we'll probably roll some nerd dice to yes. determine. Uh, but it depends, depends on how many people we actually have, right? I've got D4 all the way to D20. We got so. all the Ds, yeah. All <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, yeah yeah so so come party with us drink some reasoning we'll give away two tickets uh, on the show it's been a while since we've done something cool like that yep uh, happy to do it thanks for watching we'll see you next so, week I'm, not, oh, I'm, yeah. so, I'm sorry I don't, I don't, I'm not giving up a question of the day really yeah I'm sorry nobody okay. respond well That's we're going to get comments this week because people can get free yeah. stuff out of it so so take advantage what's, of it what's your favorite sweetness level in Riesling there we go do you like dry do you like Ashleza do you like TBA like what, what do you prefer to drink when it comes to Riesling? Spätlese for me. Cabinet for me. <laughs>